Hello, everyone, and welcome to the introduction for the forthcoming Autumn Mox Marking Training Event, relevant to the 2015 A Level Psychology Specification. Within this introduction, I am going to give you an overview of the content of the A Level, and then we'll go through some sample responses. In the full face to face event, you will have the opportunity to mark real candidate responses and a trainer will give you feedback on the actual marks awarded and will provide guidance on how to mark different types of responses. The full event is due to take place in London, Manchester and Birmingham in October and November 2016. To book a place on the training, go to the Pearson Edexcel training page and select GCE Psychology. So, without further ado, let's begin. Firstly, this introduction event will briefly cover the assessment requirements of the new 2015 specification. And in the full event, you will be able to see the differences in content from the legacy to the 2015 specification in more detail. Secondly, this introduction will explore paper structure and you will be able to discuss the new types of questions at the full event. Thirdly, we will get on to marking some genuine student responses. As mentioned earlier, you will get a chance to mark a variety of these in the full event and feedback will be provided. You will need to pause this presentation when completing the activity. To begin, let's remind ourselves of the A-level assessment structure. You will see that there will be three papers for candidates to sit, which will all have to be done in the same summer for the full A-level award. Paper 1 covers five sections, including social, cognitive, biological, learning, issues and debates. Paper 2 covers clinical psychology and an option from health, criminological or child. Paper 3 is more of a synoptic revision paper, which looks at debates, issues, methodology and studies. In the full event, we will go through the content of each of these sections in greater detail and can share some ideas on different possible ways to deliver these and assess students. A-level psychology comprises three two-hour exams which all have to be sat in the same summer series. In the full event, you will have the chance to discuss how your teaching is progressing and be able to share ideas with others about assessment methods for these exams. This slide shows a breakdown of the proportion of assessment objectives, AOs, for the AS and A level. The main thing to note here is the definitions of AO1 AO2 and AO3, which have changed for the 2015 specification. The relevant changes will be discussed further at the full event. Now we'll remind ourselves of the paper structures and the types of questions in the A level assessments. Paper 1 is composed of five sections worth 90 marks in total. Sections A to D is out of 70 marks and comprises mixed question types, including stimulus response and short answer questions. Section E is worth 20 marks and comprises two extended response questions. Paper 2 is composed of two sections worth 90 marks in total. Section A is worth 54 marks 
and comprises mixed question types, including data response, short answer questions, and a 20-mark essay question. Section B is worth 36 marks and comprises mixed question types, including data response, short answer, and extended response questions. Paper 3 is composed of three sections, worth 80 marks in total. Section A is worth 24 marks and comprises mixed question types, including data response and short answer questions. Section B is worth 32 marks and comprises two extended response questions. Section C is worth 32 marks and comprises two extended response questions. This slide gives an idea of the types of assessment questions your students will experience in the 2015 specification. In a few minutes, we will go through some examples of short answer and extended open response questions. In the full event, you will be able to discuss the new forms of assessment in the 2015 psychology specification further. And there will be a variety of question types covered in the marking exercises. Question papers comprise short answer, extended open response, data response questions. There are new question types in the 2015 psychology specification that were not in the legacy 2008 specification. The first are short answer questions, up to seven marks, which can be assessed using multiple AOs. For example, a question could have a mix of AO1 and AO3 if it asks for a strength of a study or theory. The AO1 will be for identification of the strength and the AO3 mark will be awarded for justification of the strength. A second new question type is the use of single command words for 8 to 20 mark questions. These questions will have a predictable set of AOs being assessed and are marked using levels-based mark schemes, which are generic. For example, Discuss is a command word used for eight mark questions to assess AO1 and AO2. A final new question type are maths calculation questions, where candidates may have to calculate average scores, standard deviation, or inferential statistics, such as Man Whitney, during the examination. In the full day face to face event, there will be examples of all of these question types, which you will have the opportunity to mark and discuss further. There are two types of mark schemes, and we'll now look at each in more detail. Points based mark schemes are used for short answer questions. These mark schemes show the points awarded for each assessment objective, as well as the indicative content to show the types of responses that meet these assessment objectives. Marks are awarded for each point in the student response. Levels-based mark schemes are used for extended writing and focus on the skills being assessed. These mark schemes focus on the quality of the responses, and the levels show progression of skills from the lower to higher bands. The first stage in using a levels-based mark scheme is to decide into which level the answer should be placed. To do this, Markers use a best-fit approach, deciding which level most closely describes the quality of the answer. Answers can display characteristics from more than one level, and where this happens, markers use additional guidance and their professional judgment 
to decide which level is most appropriate. After a level has been decided on, the next stage is to decide on the mark within the level. Where a level has specific guidance about how to place an answer within a level, markers will always follow that guidance. Otherwise, the following guidance is applied. For levels containing two marks only, markers start with the presumption that the student response will be at the top of the level. They will then move down to the lower mark if the work only just meets the requirements of the level. For levels containing three or more marks, markers should be prepared to use the full range of marks available and not restrict marks to the middle. Markers start at the middle of the level, or the upper middle mark if there is an even number of marks, and then move the mark up or down to find the best mark. To do this, they take into account how far the answer meets the requirements of the level. If it meets the requirements fully, markers should be prepared to award full marks within the level. The top mark in the level is used for answers that are as good as can realistically be expected within that level. If it only barely meets the requirements of the level, markers should consider awarding marks at the bottom of the level. The bottom mark in the level is used for answers that are the weakest that can be expected within that level. The middle marks of the level are used for answers that have a reasonable match to the descriptor. This might represent a balance between some characteristics of the level that are fully met and others that are only barely met. We're now going to look at student responses to two of the question types. We will look at a four-mark response, followed by a 12-mark essay, and feedback will be given along the way. Open the Delegate booklet, which is available to download alongside this video. When you have this document, pause the video so you can mark the student responses using the mark schemes provided in the booklet. When you have finished, continue to play this video to reveal the examiner's marks and comments. Pause the video now. So the first question was, Tom is busy with his schoolwork and revision. He is told by his teacher, Mrs. Smith, to make sure he turns up to lessons early so that he can run errands for her. Mrs. Smith orders Tom to do her photocopying and help prepare the classroom for her lessons. Using agency theory, explain why Tom might have obeyed Mrs. Smith's orders, even though he was busy, for four marks. You will notice on the mark scheme for question one that this question is for four marks and is all AO2. You will notice on your mark scheme that the candidate does not gain credit if the point they make does not apply to the scenario. In other words, generic marking points score zero credit. Student response number one has demonstrated a good contextualization of agency theory in relation to the scenario in the question and has been awarded four marks, all of which are AO2 marks for the application of knowledge to a context, evident throughout the response where the theory has been clearly applied to Tom and Mrs. Smith. While the first part of this response is accurate, although not well explained, the candidate does not refer to the context from the scenario until the very last line. This has resulted in a low mark, as the response does not answer the actual question. It is a response purely explaining Milgram's theory, 
not applying the theory to the scenario as asked. This has therefore been credited with one mark for the final section of the response. Part 1b is correct for one mark. The response to Part 1c shows that the student has not understood the data, as they refer to falling incomes and falling car sales. There is no credit in the observation that it is income elastic, because the concept of understanding the numerical calculations has been awarded in Part A, and is not included in the mark scheme for this part of the question. Open the delegate booklet which is available to download alongside this video. When you have this document, pause the video so you can mark the student responses, using the mark schemes provided in the booklet. When you have finished, continue to play this video to reveal the examiner's marks and comments. Pause the video now. So the second question was, evaluate the issue of reductionism in relation to the use of biological and learning theories in explaining human behaviour for 12 marks. This question is marked using a level-based marking criteria and as an evaluate question, Half of the available marks are for consideration of AO1 content and the other half are for AO3 content. Response 1 to question 2 contains some good knowledge and understanding of learning and biological psychology. Some evidence has been drawn from other areas of the A-level course, which is acceptable at A-level. There is some understanding of reductionism demonstrated, although this has not been well developed in parts of the response. Therefore, the response achieved level 3 for the AO1 content. There is little attempt at a balanced evaluation, and the focus is on the weaknesses of reductionism. These are disjointed and not synthesized across the points that are made. The conclusion is based on the argument presented albeit one-sided. They just about achieved level 3 with the AO3 content. So overall, this response is at the bottom of level 3 and was awarded a total of 7 marks. Now for student response number 2. The response here shows good knowledge and understanding of the debates surrounding reductionism. However, the candidate fails to draw sufficiently from the areas of biological psychology and learning theories that they are directed to use in the question. References to these are limited and at times appear as ad hoc comments. They achieve level 2 for the AO1 content. There are some good evaluation points given. However, these are not fully developed to highlight the strengths and weaknesses of reductionism in biological and learning theories specifically. Some alternative explanations could have been included in the evaluation, where the candidate begins to mention humanism and psychoanalysis. However, their points stop short of evaluation and are unsupported statements. They have given a conclusion, although this is superficial, as the evaluation throughout the response is generic. The candidate is awarded level 2 for the AO3 content, and overall is given level 2, being awarded 4 marks in total. To finish, I'd like to remind you of the support available for A-level psychology. We have a range of support materials to help you plan, teach, track and assess, and develop. All of these are summarised here. To access the free qualifications support, follow the link in the bottom left of the slide.
To find out more about the published resources available, follow the link in the bottom right of the slide. If you would like to complete further marking activities and training for marking mock exams in your centre, why not join us at one of our full-day face-to-face training events? In these events, you will be able to work through student responses to all the levels-based question types and practice using the mark schemes. You will also have the opportunity to discuss the marking activities with other delegates and ask questions to our experienced trainers. To book a place on the training, go to Pearson Edexcel training page and select GCE Psychology. If you need any further help and support, please contact Julius Edwards, who is our subject advisor for psychology. Thank you for taking part in this pre-recorded event.